Uh, welcome back uh, for part two of our interview with Coach Pecora from Norwich University. Uh, he was kind enough to sit down with us and profile his school. And in the second half of this interview, he's going to speak about some uh, general recruiting tips and answer some questions uh, to provide some advice to our, uh, our young prospects out there and their families. So, uh, Coach, thanks again for being back with us. My pleasure. Over the course of a year, can you explain what the recruiting process looks like for you as a Division III school, and what are the challenges and limitations that you face? Well, first, the budget is, is kind of restrictive. So what we do, especially um, in the fall, and I'm hoping this fall will be no different, is we have a re, uh, prospect camp. And we, we send kids forms to fill out that they can come um, visit the school and also uh, show us what they do. Um, we try to do it, uh, you know, we give them a 60 yard dash, pitchers go through a uh, bullpen session, catchers are going through uh, blocking and, and uh, pop time and then hitting, base running. Um, and then what we try to do is we try to watch them play in a inner prospect camp game. Um, I, I really don't think, I'd rather see game film than I would a kid doing drills. You know, there's no pressure. There's no um, uh, uh, a catcher have to throw anybody out in a game. I want to see the, the kid uh, performing in in pressure situations. Um, same thing with the hitting. Yeah, I want to see his swing, but I want to see what he looks like in a game. Um, you know, I I always think back um, like a kid get, gets up and he's 0 for 3 and he hits a line drive to the shortstop. He hits a gap shot to left center and it's caught. Um, he hits a shot to the opposite field and the guy makes a catch. He's 0 for 3. The other, another kid gets up, hits a bloop off the thumbs for a base hit a ground ball, a seeing eye ground ball up the middle, a hit and run single. He's three for three. Who had the better day? Well, to help his team win, the kid that was three for three. But the kid that was 0 for three hit the ball the way we want him to hit the ball. So that's a lot of times people look at the result rather than the process. And we want kids that are not afraid to fail because they're going to fail seven out of 10 times. So it's like, you got to deal with it. And it's that mental makeup of, of what do you, what do you, how do you handle adversity? And that's why the prospect camp is so good. Uh, we think, uh, last two years ago, we got seven kids from the prospect camp, including a kid from Tennessee. This year, we got two kids from California who showed up at the prospect camp. The, uh, one was coming with the military in mind, and another kid uh, came from Pennsylvania who was going to, he just wanted to see what it was like, fell in love with the place, and he's here. So it's like, it, 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 it's a different type of process. Oh, we try everything to get kids to get here. Have you ever had a, uh, a player who was a character issue in your recruiting process that you ended up taking a risk on? Did it work out? And would you do it again? At where we are with, with Norwich, if the kids in the military, if there's a question of character, uh, usually the military deals with it, so I don't have to. 
Uh, we have had kids that have been a character issue and probably we're hitting 50-50. You know, I mean, everybody needs a, a second chance. They need, you know, it, t it takes kids a while to grow up. Some some kids don't grow up until they're 20. You know, we all think of, well, you're, yeah. you're a senior in high school. You should be mature enough. That doesn't happen. You know, everybody, everybody matures differently. And, you know, we may get a kid who um, is a pain in the neck for three years his senior year. He's 21, 22 years old, and he goes, I figured it out. When speaking with a recruit for the very first time, is there a particular question that you start that conversation with? Yep. Why Norwich? Why do you want to be here? And what are you going to major in? Uh, are you interested in the core? Um, what are you looking to get out of the school? And then probably, you know, as questions, as things come up in the conversation, when they get to maybe question four, five, or six, then it's like, all right, tell me what you want to do um, when you play baseball. How do you want to handle it? And when kids say, I can play anywhere, I said, no. Tell me you got one choice to impress me. Where do you want to play? And that's where, um, that's where we start. You know, oh, I can play anywhere. No, you can't. You can't play anywhere. You got to play where you want to play. Um, one of the first recruits I, I ever had, um, I was asking him questions and his parents were ask, answering the question. And I'd answer a question and they would answer. And I'd ask him a question and they would answer. And finally I said, I asked him a question and I said, now I want to hear your son. And the kid kind of looked at me and went, uh, uh, I said, yeah, okay. So, you know, the parents have to understand that you want, you want the best for your son okay uh you want the best for your daughter wherever they're going to go to school but at some time they have to let go and it's about them what misconceptions do you think high school athletes have about college recruiting and college baseball in general give them a reality check on the nature of college recruiting When I recruit a kid, I try to be as honest as I can with them. Um, number one, I've, if I've seen them play, I've got to, we've got to hit the ground running. And we have time that we can expand and get better and, and stuff like that. But, uh, you don't have time to get into a deep slump, if that makes any sense. Um, and what they have to understand is they may have been, let's say, one, two, or three on their baseball team. Well, they're going up against kids that were the number three, four, or five hitter on their team and they're batting one, two, or three. You know, one of the things I tell pitchers is in high school, chances are in the seventh, eighth, and ninth position in order, you can dominate a kid. In college, you can't do that. And the mental uh, grind is unbelievable that you have to think that much, that much ahead. 
it's not about your physical ability. It's your mental approach. As a hitter, you just can't react to it. You've got to know. You've got to, we keep a ton of charts. They have to be able to analyze what they're, what they're looking at. What is he trying to get you out with? And go from there. Uh, it's not a reaction anymore. You've got to have a game plan. And that's what a lot of kids spend the first year doing is figuring out what they're trying to get out on. Uh, on the field, on the campus, and in the classroom, how is Division Three baseball different from the other levels of college ball? And uh, even though Division Three doesn't get a lot of glory in the press, why should a college prospect consider playing at the Division Three level? You're going to play. Um, you're going to get a. You're going to get an education, and you're going to be able to play. You're going to be able to do both. Um, and I'm not, we had a kid who, um, transferred from a big time number one, division one school. He did not play. He didn't even get a look. Um, he transferred last year. He's one of our starting, one of our pitchers and he goes, I, they wouldn't even let me try out. You know, it's, it's, it goes back to, can you get four more years out of your ability before somebody takes the uniform from you? And, um, you know, like I said, at Norwich, you're going to walk out of here with a great education and hopefully a lot of memories about playing baseball. Um, um, and that's what we want you to be able to do. There are some kids, not a lot, not as many as there used to be, but you could play football, soccer, cross country, and then you could play baseball in the spring. You know, there aren't a lot of kids that can do that. Um, there are some, but not a lot in division one and two. And I think that, we offer a unique uh, opportunity for kids. There are 40, I think it was two years ago, three years ago, there were uh, 485,000 high school kids playing uh, high school baseball. There's only 42,000 playing college baseball. Why not be one of them? Uh, since Division Three athletes don't receive athletic scholarships, uh, what are some ways uh, recruits can try to save money on tuition at the D3 level? Uh, academic scholarships, um, grants and aids, um, you know, work study. Um, when I was in college, I did, like I said, I didn't play college baseball. But my father always used to say, I don't want you getting a job. I want you to figure out what uh, college is all about. You're going to have your whole life to work. And while kids sometimes need to, to work and, and do odd jobs and stuff like that, Division Three offers you a place to go to school and to play. Uh, and you need to take advantage of that. You're gonna have your whole life to work and figure it out. You know, if you're, if you're in the core and you're a, a kid, they're gonna pay you to go to school. Well, once you're done, then you're gonna go work for the government. You're gonna be in the military. So why not enjoy what, you, what you're doing? You know, they're going to control you in the summertime. Why is film and receiving an honest talent evaluation so important to a player in the recruiting process? Because you don't want to bring in a kid who doesn't have any shot at, making, at playing college baseball. 
for your school. I think you got to be honest with the kid and say, you know, because it's Division Three, you're not going to get a lot of money. So why bring them a long way from home just to cut them? You know, we it may happen, it may not. You you never know what kids are going to show up when they get here. So it's like, just be honest with them and, and kids need to accept the honesty of it as well. Do you have any ideas on how to grow this game at, um, especially at the youth level? I think at the youth level, we have to stop telling kids that they're going to get a college scholarship and they have to just go out and play the game for the sake of playing the game. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, when, when, uh, when I was coaching at one point, when I was coaching high school baseball, uh, one year I was coaching a little league team, a high school team and a senior and a Babe Ruth team in the, in the summer. So I started in roughly March and I didn't end until July. And it's like, that was a long year, long couple of years, but I had to do it if we were going to improve. And I think just giving kids the opportunity to play. Um, and I think they're trying to figure out too much stuff. Um, you want to shorten the games, watch some of the old stuff that's on ESPN, how quick it goes if they show you the whole game. Because number one, they throw strikes. Number two, um, they don't take three minutes between each inning. You know, you want to speed the game up, cut down on the commercials. Um, and then you hear the thing, well, that's paying the salaries. Well, you can't have it both ways. You know, and um, you don't have to change the game. I think it's, I think somebody gave a statistic the other, I uh, read that with home runs, strikeouts, and walks, 30% of the time the ball's not in play. And it's like, that's a lot of time. They got to do something to speed it up. They got to do something to sell the, um, the Mike Trouts of the world. Uh, they don't market them the way football markets their players, basketball mar markets their players. They got to figure out a way to market guys uh, to, to the public. This one's kind of unique, you know, for me, you know, with Baseball University, I suppose, you know, I'm entering into that showcase college recruiting industry, although you know, we're, we're trying to take a more charitable approach and, and figure out how to reach all demographics. And I guess that's my last question is, do you think that the travel ball, the showcase college recruiting industry is, is helping baseball or is it hindering it, uh, you know, as it is a for-profit model? I, I think if, if it's taking away from a kid playing their high school, for their high school team, it's, it's hurting it. If they're doing it in conjunction along with other activities, fine. Um, the th thing is to or what to college, and they go, uh, "Well, my college ball said, my college coach said this." Okay, fine. You know, things change up here. A lot of times I have to l let the kid struggle a little bit and then make changes because he's got it in his mind mindset, I can do this, I can do that. And they, they can't. It's different. Um, I think everything has a place, um, but in moderation. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, it's it's like 
when you when you have a really good year, okay, but people are going to make changes and they're going to catch up with you, or something is going to take place and it's it's going to catch up. Like you know, like I said before, the average age a kid retires is thirteen. Well, there's a re a reason, you know. Suddenly, when he's told hold the ball hurt when it hits you, and it does, it's like, I'm out of here, you know, uh, or they don't like striking out. Baseball's a funny game. It's an individual team game. You know, if you, if, if you have a bad block in football, most of the time people don't know it. Or if you miss a tackle, they might not see it. You drop a fly ball, people are going to see that. You strike out, people are going to see that. So, and they they have to learn how to accept accept that. 